Welcome to the Ambien iPad. In this video, I'm going to continue on with my series of integrating the Mellotron with iPad apps. For this video, I'll be using a bunch of different instruments from Moog, Animoog, Model 15, and Model D. For the Mellotron, I'll be sticking with Mark 1 sounds, and we'll see which ones in there will work for this jam. The signal chain is the Mellotron M4000D Mini. Its master mono analog output goes into a Boss volume pedal on the floor. The output from the volume pedal goes into a Boss RE202 Space Echo. The stereo output from the Space Echo goes into a Universal Audio Volt 276 interface, which then communicates back and forth with the iPad Pro. I've got a setup here in AUM. I'm doing screen recording. Everything seems to be going. This is pretty much strictly improvisational. About 10 minutes ago, I had decided that I wanted to continue on with the series, as I mentioned in the beginning, and I did set up a few of the different Moog apps, and so we'll go through all that. But let's start with the Mellotron first. Uh, I am actually, instead of using the Space Echo as a looper, uh, which I've done a lot of, sound on sound looper, I do have Gauss set up. Uh, so we'll walk through that as well. On the Mellotron, it is going through the Space Echo for that classic Space Echo sound. There is some reverb built in here, and depending on the setting, I'll change that. I also have Spatializer set up because even though the output from the Space Echo is stereo, it's not really that much of a wide stereo field, so I find Spatializer helps there. I'm sticking mainly with Mark 1 sounds, um, and uh, let's just run through those. I'm going to keep Spatializer on. I've got the boss on. Uh, we'll just listen to what they sound like with that. So here is the Mark 1 clarinet. <laughs> and we have nothing because the volume pedal's off. Let's try that one more time. The Mark 1 clarinet. There you go with the space echo. Might as well turn it off. So spatializer's on, but it's not. Doesn't really sound like it's doing a heck of a lot. Uh, let's leave that off. The other thing I'm going to use is tenor sax. I know that. And with the space echo on. Now I've just got, I'm not tapping this to meet the tempo of what I have set up in AUM, which is actually 65 beats per minute. Um, the BPM is really low, even though it's not going to sound that low. So after the tenor sax, those are the two main instruments that I'm going to use for when the Moogs are going and um, kind of for soloing. For uh, the loop, I'll use most of the Mark I sounds and I'll demonstrate a short loop. Uh, in a little bit here. And you know what? I may st start out with the piano. I really don't use the Mark I piano that much, and there's a, a specific reason for that. Let me turn off the space echo. The way they have it set up is you've got a couple, at least one or octave, it might even be two missing in the middle. So I'm just going to play a few notes and you'll hear what I what I'm talking about. So you hear that jump over to C. So there's definitely an octave missing there. Let's put the space echo on. So the Mark I is the most uh, crunchiest of pianos on the Mellotron, but I like it anyways. That's the Mellotron. Uh, and again, I'll be using a lot more sounds when I do Gauss. We'll get into that. Let me go back to... Actually, let's go stay on the piano since we would be starting with that. I do have three violins set up. I may use that at some point or maybe at the end. We'll see. Let's, let's move over to the Moog apps. I have three here. We've got Animoog. And I have this, uh, I'm going to be doing the jam in E, uh, Aeolian. So I do have, you can change the scales. And it's set up for G. <laughs> so let's get it to E. And we want 
alien. There we go. And let's turn the scale off. And these are the, these are the sounds I'll be using on the Animoog. Just a great fun instrument because it's so expressive. So it almost sounds like an ARP, even though the, the ARP's not on. Let's turn the ARP on, because it does change the sound. And then I'll probably use the hold at some points to kind of keep that going. Let's turn that off. I've got a uh, Model 15 here. I have a sequence set up in Fugue Machine that is going to trigger both the Model 15 and the Model D, the Mini Moog. And um, so I won't really be playing those. They're just going to be going off in the background. Let's start with the Model 15. Let me open up Fugue Machine here. So you can see that in action. And then we would add in Model 15, and then I would just add in the Model D. And I like doing this, it's easy to kind of set patches up where even though Fugue Machine is triggering both and there's no difference between uh, what's, what's going on in Fugue Machine to trigger, it sounds like two completely different set of lines. Let me turn off the Model 15. It's just the way the patches are. I love this that it shows the... <laughs> Who's playing? And back to the Model 15. Whoops, and the Moog off. I'll get to that. What's off on the right there? Add them back in. And then if we do the the Animoog, let's put the hold on. So we've got everything going off here. And then uh, actually, let's go to. I think once everything is going, the tenor sax will cut through more than the clarinet, but let's try the clarinet here. Everything's really loud. I probably, no. So yeah, I will not be using the clarinet during this portion. Let's move over to the tenor sax, which is what I will use. So that'll work good. I can probably use the clarinet maybe earlier in the jam when there's less stuff going on. So let's just turn that off. Actually, turn Animog off too. Yeah, I think that'll work a lot better. Let's get these going again. Or just... I do... If you notice down here, most everything is going to bus A except the Mellotron. What I have on bus A is Rack Reverb from Audio Kit. Just to have a little reverb, I, I did try it without, and actually I can just turn the reverb off. Just adds a little more. You can tell on headphones. <laughs> but it's it's set pretty low. And then I will do uh, some Gauss. Let me do a quick Gauss loop so you can hear. I'll keep both those things. Yeah, let's add the Animogen as well. All right, so this will take a second. Let's get recording going here. of these on videos so there's just so much you can do and regardless that I really like using the space echo as a sound on sound looper Gauss is, is great 
The only thing I don't like about it that I've mentioned a lot, and I have communicated with the de developer, and unfortunately it's kind of part of the way the app is written, is so when you go in and out of recording, you kind of get an audible thump. And that's a bummer. So I try now when I'm using Gauss to just have it going and then not worry about it. So it's off now. Now the other thing is that I do not have any loop decay. Let me add a little loop decay so it will. And then we could just kind of fade these out slowly. In the jam, I would fade them out a lot more slowly. I have no preconceived structure here. I'm kind of making up the structure as I'm explaining it and trying to remember it. So now we have just Gauss going with a bunch of the Mark I sounds. Maybe let's add in the violin now. Uh, let me change this a little. A little more on the intensity. Probably don't need much reverb. Let's hear what we've got. Yeah, I think that'll work at the end. Just a little kind of atmospheric. Yeah, I think this setup will work. Let me reconfigure uh, or just essentially uh, clear everything out so I can start from scratch again and I'll get the jam going.
Moog was recently purchased and I really hope that these apps continue to be supported. They're some of my favorite synth apps. And they really did a good job both on the look and feel and with the sound. Of course, Moog and the company that bought them say nothing's going to change. It's going to be better for customers, but that will remain to be seen. And if history is a lesson, some things will change dramatically. And on the name Moog, I attended a talk by Robert Moog years ago, and he actually uh, did discuss his name. He said it can be pronounced either way, Moog or Moog. And he said half his family goes one way, half goes the other. But he and his wife decided early on that they were going to stick with Moog. So that's what I do. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and good luck with your own music.